Well, hello everybody, how are you today? It's Sharon here from I Restore Stuff, the blog. And um, if you're just joining me and you've been, you're watching the replay, comment the word replay for a chance to win some prizes in the 24 hours after the live goes live. Uh, but if you're here live, let me know where you're tuning in from. Hi Dawn, hi everybody, how are you? And uh, stay tuned to the end because you know we give out prizes here at Essential Stencil. They're very generous. We usually have three prize winners, sometimes a bonus prize. So just look out, there could be one of those today. Not quite sure what's gonna happen here. You never know, so stay tuned. Uh, today, we're gonna be making a clock. Yes, a clock. And I've got my huge round here ready. I've actually got two ready. So this is, I've painted a black undercoat, a black base for it. And um, I'm gonna do a sort of a light color on top of that, a French eggshell color. And then I've got another clock that we'll actually be stenciling on because this one will be too wet to stencil and that's gonna have a black background. So we're doing a bit of a farmhouse clock today. And I've even got the clock mechanisms and everything. Let me just refresh my page over here so I can see the live, make sure our comments are all coming through. How are you today? Teresa's watching. I don't have my glasses on, that's what's the problem. Let me know um, how are you going? How has your week been? It's Wednesday night for you guys, Thursday here for us here in Australia. And I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but behind me on the house directly behind me, you can see just the lights with the blinds are shut there right now, but we've got a back fence. And on the other side, they're building an estate so there's construction going on. Builders are literally hammering the house behind us and um, building it. So that's a lot of fun. I found it. I found our live. So let me just click on that so I can play and see the comments as we are going through. Because sometimes they don't turn out on your phone. Um, hi, Joyce. I did see that one. Oh, they see lots more comments here on the on the uh, live. Please feel free to share it with your fellow DIYers, uh, tag a person or uh, or share the live, that would be amazing. We love it when you do that. It also helps other people get to know about essential stencils and give some stenciling tips, all sorts of things like that. So let the, let the fun begin, says Ursula. Yeah, I've got my long sleeves on, it's cold. It's winter here in Australia. And uh, I know you guys are having summer in the USA. So there's, um, we're making a clock if you've just joined us and I've started painting already my big round. So let me just continue to paint the base for that. I'm just using some furniture paint, Fusions French eggshell. Uh, now I do have a, a supply list that I can give everyone later on. It's on my website actually, but I can do that later. And um, of all the stencils we'll be using, the supplies we'll be using. Now let me tell you about this big round here it's actually a large, and you can do this on a lot smaller rounds. These were actually pre-cut. My husband is uh, works in the AV events industry, and he had about 50 of these huge round MDF dots, I call them, uh, made for an event. And he used them several times actually for different backdrops and things. They were painted white. In fact, I roller painted each one of them for him. And uh, then he stopped using them, didn't need them anymore. And I said, well, I'll use them. They'll be perfect for making clocks. And so I've actually done clock workshop, clock making workshops. I've um, sold some in my shop. But the project we're doing today, I tried to find some MDF rounds that were on Amazon and I've listed some there in my supply, in my Amazon shop but you will find that they're a bit smaller than this one, but they will still work with the, and you can get all sorts of different sizes of hands and mechanisms to use for your, for your clocks. Now what I'm doing today is I've got a dark base and this is actually covering really quite well. We wanna go for a bit of a rustic farmhouse look and I've got something planned for this one. We're going to try and make some VJ boards on this while the paint is still wet. I'm going to see if that works for us. So I'm going to show you a couple of different backgrounds that you could do for your clocks today because I've got two of these rounds ready to go. There's something on there. 
never mind. So this, you probably, mm, it looks a little bit grey or white in the, on the video, but it's a French eggshell and I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint and I've got some links to all of these in um, my Amazon shop. If you got that last week or I can send that to you later on. Thanks for those who've just joined us. You can see I've drilled a hole in the center of the clock and that will be important for you to do before you start painting it and creating your background. And you want the diameter of that hole to fit the clock mechanism that you choose. So you can get clock mechanisms and whole sets with the hands and everything. They're like replacement parts, you would, you would call them for your clocks, quartz clocks. Um, and um, you can get them from Amazon. Probably any clock repair place would have them also. All right, so I wanna do this while the paint is wet. Don't forget to do your edges. I actually did my edges first because we want them to sort of all blend in. <clears throat> and what I'm going to use is just this huge, large stick of wood. And I want to go, wanna create some board, VJ board looking marks on it. And I'm just gonna eyeball this guys. So maybe I should put the first one, I'll make it go away from the center. And I'm not going to lay it down too heavily because I don't want that mark to come in, but I'm just gonna use any kind of scraper. You could use a credit card. I've got a pencil here handy. You could use anything like that. I wanna just try and see if I can make a line across here and remove some of that light color paint and see the, you can see the black underneath it. Let's do one around about the same on this side. Now this is where you probably would wanna measure, but you know me. We're just going to wing it. I think we need a little bit closer. So we're making a bit of a, a weathered, well, it probably doesn't even have to be weathered board, but when we finished and it all dries, you could, if you wanted to, um, sand and distress the edges to see some more of that, that dark poking through. So see what I'm doing? I've just got a piece of board you could use a ruler if you wanted to but this clock is actually 60 centimeters in, in diameter someone's going to have to convert that to inches for me because I forgot to um, have a look to see how how wide that is but um, it's quite large as you can see and so our ruler is oh, well let's see so our rulers, school rulers, are 30 centimetres and yours are 12 inches. So 30 centimetres equals around about 12 inches. So it's about 24 inches. This clock. Oh, okay. So we could have an uneven clock here, but you see what we're trying to do. Okay, Essential Stencil has put up there that supply list for you guys. So whatever we're doing today, you can see that. It includes our stencils. Um, that I'll be using later on. But right now we're just sort of showing you an idea for a background of a clock. So for this one, I just had a dark, you could do chocolate brown underneath, you could do black, you could do a really dark charcoal gray, whatever you like. I'm just gonna make sure that brush and my lid goes back on the paint because we don't want that drying out. And now let me hold that up so you can see it a little better. See how it looks sort of like VJ Board. So that's very wet right now. It's a rainy day here. So I'll have to leave that aside to dry. Whoop. There we go. Rhonda says it's rainy and stormy in Ohio today too. Wow. Hi Nicole from Phoenix. All right, so I'm going to set that aside somewhere. And I'll bring on another clock round that I've created and that one I really sort of I only used one coat of that and it did have quite good coverage so you might find uh, that you needed to do an extra coat that's okay Oop. let's hope that doesn't fall off there and here's one I've prepared earlier and for this for this clock I've used a black base well it's going to be the background I've actually just painted that with um, a black furniture paint. 
I'm actually going to put this clock down on the floor because it's in my way. They're so huge. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now I'm ready to put the numbers on my clock. So I want to use our essential stencil numbers. I feel like I'm too close there now. So I need to zoom this down a little bit further. There we go. We're in the shot now. So the stencils I'll be using today, they're all on that supply list there that's um, linked in at the comments that Essential Stencil has put there. Now we're going to use the numbers tags. These go with Essential Stencil's little wooden tags that they stock there too. Hi Judy, thanks everyone for coming on and saying hello. I love it when you join in the conversation too because we do have prizes at the end of our the end of our live. So these are the numbers. They um, obviously just say numbers one through nine and they also have a zero and um, so we're going to use those for our clock today the other thing that I thought that you can have on a clock so what we'll be doing and I'll try and do this up the right way I may only get to our what do you call it these these um, quarter hour numbers you'll have to tell me if I've got these the right way <laughs> because I'm doing this upside down and my one and the two. Yes, I'm looking back at the camera. This is upside down for me. So obviously I don't want to put this little number um, word on there. I'm just going to do it like that. You could put all of the numbers on if you wanted to because it, it would actually fit your numbers if you wanted to put them all down here. But for today, just for the sake of time for our live, I am actually just going to put these ones here and our clock mechanism in the center but I wanted to show you some ideas for adding to that oh is the three backwards someone's asking let me see is that backwards no I think that's right or if I got it on the right wrong way around is that what you're saying one two three <laughs> now I have to go Okay, someone's going to tell me. <laughs> Linda said she just got this number set today. That's amazing. All right, so the one I do want to use, I want to use the word gather in the middle of my clock because I thought that would be a fun farmhouse clock look. Now this set today is on my supply list and it's got welcome farmhouse gather. And I feel like this is like the OG of Essential Stencils collection of stencils because this one has been around for a long time. In fact, they uh, I think I saw that they're actually on sale at the moment, this set. So if you're new to Essential Stencil and still don't have this set, now's a good time to get it. It's on sale. But I do think there's only limited amount left. There's only like 20 something left, which is kind of low stock at the moment. But the numbers, plenty in stock. So grab a hold of those. Some other ideas though, for the center of your clock, what about the flowers? You know, the flower set from Essential Stencil. Imagine a flower in the, in the middle of that, how gorgeous that would look. So I just brought some of these out to show you some other ideas. Angel wings, imagine that in the center of a clock. How cool is that? Time flies, hey? I don't know. <laughs> um, you could put them this way, however the angel wings go. Um, and the other one I did find which might be fun is spring is in the air. You wouldn't have to use the spring, but I love the bicycle. I love the idea of just having a cute little bicycle in there. There are other pictures. There's also the farmhouse trucks, which would look amazing, wouldn't they? So the tr a farmhouse truck here from some of the other sets. There's even, you know, on the spring one, we've got the wreaths. You could add a wreath in the center there. All sorts of great ideas for putting sort of in the center of a clock. But we're going to put the word gather today. I might save that till last and get us started on these numbers and figuring out the best way to do this. Now, I haven't pra practiced doing this on a clock yet. I need my pencil and I will need, probably I'll use this straight stick. The other little idea I've got is that I'm going to use these little circle dots to create dots for my clock um, as well. So we're going to do that first. And I'm going to need some white paint and some essential stencil stencil brushes. These are on our supply list there as well, which is a pinned comment there. So um, we'll use that. I've got my painter's tape. I think we're ready to go. And I just need you to tell me <laughs> if I'm um, if my numbers end up around the wrong way. So. Just keep me posted, guys. Okay, so we're going to put this stick. See how I drilled that hole first? To find the center, obviously, you can just measure both 
um, and then drill your hole. Remember I was saying at the beginning, if you missed that, you want that hole diameter to be the same size as your, let me just show you the clock mechanism that we'll be using. And there's a little instruction sheets. Most of these, if you get yours on Amazon, they should come with a little instruction sheet of how it all fits together. This is the, it's called a quartz um, clock mechanism. And so they all have different shaft sizes. Now the shaft is this size here, this part here. So you just want to make sure, see this clock is MDF and it's only about that thick. So whatever thickness you get of your clock, make sure that that shaft is going to fit through and it needs to come, have a little bit showing at the top for all the other little pieces that go on for the hands, etc. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The diameter will be shown on, <clears throat> when you order it, it'll be on the order form. Just make sure you drill the hole so that it fits in. Mine, it took a little, a few goes of just kind of going, okay, no, that's not big enough, add a little bit more. Um, now we're going to measure <clears throat> for the numbers and I'm just making my ruler. It's not really a ruler, it's just a straight stick that actually fits on the wood. Just making it go straight across there on the centre of the hole and I want to put a little mark where I think I might want my dot, okay? So I think I need to leave room for numbers. So pretend this is the 12 and I want to have a dot around about here when the numbers show on there. So I'm just going to add a little dot here with my pencil, mark it. Then I want to measure that distance because that's how, how far I want the other dots around. So that I didn't bring my tape measure that has inches on it, guys. So we're working in Australian today. <laughs> we're working in centimetres. It's well, millimetres. It's 90 millimetres. So what I want to do is put my straight line back to make sure that I've got this line straight all the way through the centre of the centre, the centre of the centre hole. And I want to measure the same. I think it's 90 millimetres or 9 centimetres. Oh, my thing moved. It's okay, we've got this, guys. All right, so that's where I want my other dot. Now we've got to go across this way, but I do need to make sure that I'm not going skew with. okay? So to do that, I've brought my handy dandy. I feel like I'm going back to school and um, doing a bit of maths. What do you call this part of maths? where you do all this measuring with the protractor. So we want to make sure I've got a 45 degree, a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. So I'm lining up my, my line here and I want to put that right on there and make sure I've got that 90 degree angle going out to the side when I put my ruler on here. Are you still with me? Do you understand what we're doing here? Okay, let me move this over to this side. Got my lines and I can see this with my pencil. You can erase the pencil markings off later on when the when you've got all your dots on. Sometimes the paint's going to actually cover the dots that I'm doing, so I'm not worried too much. Okay, so now that's given me my 90 degrees. And if you've just joined me, we're making a clock today. Now I can't tell where my pencil lines are. There they are. So they're going right across that way. So now I've got it exactly correct. Now I just have to measure my 90 millimeters again. Oop, here we go. Oh, this is the thing. It's supposed to have a lock on this. All right, here we go. That's where my dot is going to go so that my Gotta move it up a bit. I'm in concentration mode, aren't I? Okay. Right, if you've just joined me, we're making a clock. And all your clock parts and all that kind of thing you can find easily 
on Amazon or I've got a supply list right there. So now I've got pencil marks that you probably can't see but they have my little dots. That's where I want to put my numbers. So that's what I want to do first. And I'm going to use this little circle in the end to create some dots so that when the hand points here, I could even put one in the center, could measure that out later. And we're going to do some white paint for our farmhouse clock. Thank you so much for sprinkling guys. I love it when you share our lives because that lets a lot more people see it. I'm just offloading my stencil brush. So I've dipped it in the white paint. It's just a furniture paint, a mineral paint. And now I'm offloading it onto the cardboard backing that I have here. And I've marked my dot where I want it. I just have to be very careful not to, uh, I don't want to get paint on the outside and create a little, because we're doing white on black, it's really stands out. Okay, hopefully we won't get into trouble there. We've got our dot all lined up. There we go, too easy. One dot, now we've got our next dot over here and they should all be about nine centimeters away from the edge. So I'm just putting my pencil mark right in the center of that dot. And over here, we've got our other pencil mark. How are you going? You're with me, guys. <clears throat> Oh, Crystal said, I have a spool top that this would look amazing on. Yes, I've actually made a, a clock stencil on top of a, a little table. I found a round table and it was really worse for wear. That's what I love to do. My blog name is called, my business name is I Restore Stuff. And literally I take things that are just kicked to the curb and um, have no use or purpose for anyone, I pick them up and make something new again. So I had this round tabletop with legs and everything and I created a clock top for the top of it. So that was fun. All right, so now I've got four dots in place and those are stencil dots. Now it's time for us to do the numbers. Now here's your important job is to make sure that I get the numbers in the correct place and that I don't, what I do want to do is tape off my, let me bring this a little bit closer to you so you can see the 12. I'm being very daring and doing the 12 first. <laughs> um, Dawn says she's made a couple of clocks with pallet boards. Excellent. Oh, yes. The one with Amanda's Tree of Life would be beautiful in the middle of that. So we're showing you before, if you've just joined me, some other fun ideas that you can do for the center of your clock. All right. So I'm lining up my 12 here around about where I want it. And so then I'll take the two off the top and do that. But I just want to make sure that it's in that center where the dot is, making sure we've got it all straight. Now I'll remove my two so I can put that down for my one. And I want to just cover up the word number, the number word. And now I can do my one on top. Now I don't have much left paint left on my brush, but I just thought I'd check first because it's always good to not have too much on your brush. If you've been following any of the ambassadors here for any amount of time, you'll know that we always tell you to offload and use a very dry brush. And some people um, are still saying that I'm still getting bleeding underneath the stencil. And I always tell them, just keep taking more paint off your brush until you think you've got none on there. Then try it, try that little swirling method and you'll find that that's probably what it is. Okay, so now just lining that up. So we've got our one and our two ready for our 12. I'm just looking at the comments because I'm doing this upside down. I'm thinking, did I do this correctly? Oh, Crystal says I'm doing great. <laughs> okay, thank you for your confidence. All right, so I've got that in around about the right place that I want it. And remember that I could probably put a little closer because the two is wider than the one. I didn't think about that, did I? So now I'm going to have to squish them up a little bit closer. Really close. Let's see how close I can make them. Because I was thinking that I was going to center the two and the one in the center, but really you kind of have to move that two across a little bit this way because altogether the, the one is narrower. All right, we'll see if we've got paint left on my brush again. 
not much so we might just do another dip in the white paint offloading it here on my cardboard background this is just an old moving box that I've got laying on my dining room table so that we can protect it from the paint but it also makes a good offloading for our stencils offload a bit more now I can swirl it a little bit better I was you can stipple or you can swirl but swirling is best when you've really offloaded as much as you can from the brush Shelley says, I think I've mastered the buffalo check of loading and go with the grain versus swirling. Yeah, so going with the grain is good for those long stripes. Um, in fact, when you said that, I'm thinking buffalo check. Would that make an amazing background for a clock? That would be very cool. Okay, so now our next number. Let's see if I get this the right way. 12, 3. Am I right? So I've got the dots all in the right place and I don't want our three to be going out like this. I would love it to just be showing like this. I don't know, which way would you do it? You could do it this way and have them all facing inwards like that. But I feel like I'd like to do it this way. So that's what we're going to do for this clock. We could make a whole range of different clocks in different ways. So I'm lining up the center of the three with the dot, making sure I've got that word covered and just a little bit of tape to put it in place and I'm going to offload a bit more paint. Let's go. Yes, the three looks good that way. Okay. And there's no one saying I've got it around the wrong way. I'll tell you, this, doing this upside down is tricky sometimes. <laughs> Getting used to it though. Okay, done. Got a little hair from something there. Let's move across to, oh, we'll do our six down the bottom. So I'm moving the clock up so you can see. And that is a six, isn't it? It's not a nine. <laughs> These numbers. All right, put that in the right place. See how when you've got those dots there, it's so much easier then to line everything else up. And then I'll put the clock mechanisms on and we'll test it out. Make sure we can hear it ticking. So with the clock mechanisms, the, probably the only thing I forgot to put on the supply list is batteries. So if you do want to know what stencils we're using today, where to get the clock mechanisms, where to get your MDF rounds from, I've got some links there in a supply list um, that you can take advantage of. There we go, we've got number six. And like we were saying before, you could go ahead and put all of your dots around here so then you could get, you know, every five minutes you could have, where's our nine? <coughs> you have the hands pointing at those dots and you could know a little bit more accurately what the time is. But for time's sake, just today, I'm going to, oops, here we go. I'm just going to do these numbers. Okay, there's still enough on my brush so that I can do this nine. And if you missed the beginning of our live, I actually showed you a whole nother clock um, background idea using some paint to create sort of VJ boards. as a background. <clears throat> All right, so there's our clock. Now in the center, remember I wanted to use a fun design and I showed you a few different options like the flower stencils, all of that kind of thing. Today I'm gonna to do the word gather. And it really doesn't matter if the word crosses over your hands because you can still see the general idea of the word and that it's there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to just decide now whether I'll leave these these, uh, what do you call those, leaves, or to remove them and not put them on. I think we might leave it on. It gives it a bit more of a farmhousey feel. But you can do it however you like. All right, just adding a little bit more paint and I'm just using some mineral paint. I've got links to paint on that supply list that's in the In, on the 
pinned comment there. All right, so I do love white on black and this black is very matte. It's an eggshell finish, probably more than a matte, but um, when you put the white on it, another little spot I just saw that I'm going to make sure I cover is right at the end of the G. It's a little bit close to here. And then over on this side, when I get to the H, we've got very close to the edge. So you just want to make sure those bits are all covered up. Let me see if I can sit down and relax for a minute. <coughs> Brenda says she's having a buffalo check moment. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I can read some of your comments while I'm stenciling. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, don't forget to um, join in the conversation here because we do have prizes and we pick from the comments at the end of our live. So if you're loving this, don't forget to give it a share also. I love it when you sprinkle that love around Facebook land. Facebook loves it too. <laughs> Helps us to show more people what we're doing here on the lives. Okay, I'm just spackling that a little bit or stippling it because I feel like I've got a little bit too much on my brush, but I. Those thicker letters, if you've got, if you feel like your brush has got a little bit too much paint, I go there first for those wider sections. Coming back and doing these leaves here. And I did mention before this gather sign. The other two signs in that set, these are like some of the original uh, farmhouse sign stencils that Essential Stencil has come out with. And there's a limited supply of those, but they are on sale. So grab them up if you don't have those already. <coughs> yeah, the, the white on the black, I feel like it's a very, almost like chalk on a chalkboard kind of a look especially when I do it with a dry brush and you've just got um, it's not a totally a full coverage if that makes sense just spreading out my paint a bit just being careful of these little parts that lift up quite easily so I'm making sure that go down on top of those really well. Okay, now I can spend some time blending that all in. Joyce says she's got that stencil. That's awesome. Yeah, those little number stencils are so handy for so many things. I've used them on um, stools, like a set of four stools, and I'll put like number one, number two, number three, number four, number them all. Um, I upcycle a lot of furniture and so I use that farmhouse industrial kind of look to use those numbers on and just uh, number the drawers. One, number two, number three, number four. Uh, there's so many different fun ideas you can use the number stencils for. And I've just painted the background of the clock black. Now we'll be able to tell the time. Now I have to decide if I want to keep this for my new house or sell it in my shop. Does anyone else um, do make signs, use their essential stencils for sign making? We've got a lot of people in the Stencil of the Month Club who are sign makers and actually make a living out of <coughs> selling their signs or they do it as a hobby on the side, whatever it is. It's so much fun to make signs. And Speaking of the Stencil of the Month Club, don't forget we've got a really good deal on at the moment that if you use my code, I restore stuff for uh, the Stencil of the Month Club to join, you get a free month. It's a limited time only, but you get a free month. So you obviously have to uh, order more than one month's worth of stencils, but if you join for the three month or the six month option, you get a one month absolutely free. So worth it. And if you've seen some of the ambassadors already using the July stencils, uh, they are Christmassy ones. So that's a lot of fun also. So don't forget to use my code, I restore stuff also for 
any of the essential stencils, you get 10% off in their regular essentialstencil.com store. The links for that are also in that supply list for, or in the description of my live actually. So there we go, we've got our word gather. Now it's time to put our, and I'll have to wash that off later. Now it's time to put our little mechanisms in. I want to probably put this brush in here because I may go back and do some more dots after our live today. I want to get this little clock thing in for the sake of people who want to just know how all that works. So I was talking about these before and these are on that supply list that I've provided for you there in the comments and we just have it also this one comes with they all come with different things so depending on which one you get this one it comes with a little hook so you can hang it on the wall. And we want to pop that in behind our clock and let's see if it's going to fit. And like I said before, we make that hole in the middle, just get a drill bit that's going to actually let's see if I can pop that underneath a brush or two. Let it sit there. There you go. And then we've got little instructions to put it all in. So who thinks that they can get um, get a clock made? It's really not that hard. So when I went to do it I thought oh it could be tricky but really it's um, not that hard. Okay here's we've got a problem haven't we? We've got black on black for the hands. Now you might want to think about that. What about if I turn them over? So they're really supposed to go that way black but if I turn them over that could could work. We'll see. The other option I do have is I could paint them. I do know I had a did a clock making workshop one time. I've got several sets of these, so excuse me while I just try and find two. We've got an hour hand, our minute hand. Um, I was doing a clock workshop and someone wanted to paint their their hands in metallic. So she just painted them gold or silver or something. So you can always paint them. Today I'm just going to turn them over so you can actually see them so that they stand out. <coughs> According to my little instructions here. Next thing we need is one of these washers. So we'll pop that on. Now who enjoyed that? So this round, Annette's asking about the size of this round is 60 centimeters, which I think we worked out to be about 24 inches. And then we've got a, a nut to tie on here. And you only the instructions say that you only do this with your hand. You do not want to get a a wrench or anything and tighten it. You just want to tighten it by hand because uh, otherwise you can over tighten, wreck the mechanism and you want the hands to be able to turn around so you don't want it to wreck too much. But the first thing you want to do before you do that is just feel the back of your clock and you know where that little hanger hangs it the right way around. I want to put my arm straight down here so I can feel and make sure that is pointing upwards so that it's going to hang on the wall straight. Next we want to add our hour hand. We are nearly done but I'm going to put it in on upside down and I'm not sure if this is going to work this way so we'll just have to see. And then our minute hand. I think yes is next. Uh, and this one it has a little different, you've got to fit it, it's like a rectangle so you've got to fit it on there exactly. Then uh, we don't have a second hand for this one, but some pe some clock mechanisms might come with a second hand. Yeah, it's 24 inches. Someone's saying, wow, that's huge. Uh, but it does work. These hands are only, how long are these? Let me just see. These hands are in centimeters. It's only 18 centimeters. So whatever that is in inches, you can figure that out. And so it would still fit like a 16 inch round, I would say. Okay, so now the test is to see if it works, we're going to need a battery and we want to hear it tick. <laughs> so have you guys enjoyed that live today? We're going to pick some prize winners in just a second. I might just see if I can lift this up a little bit now so I can pop my battery in. Make sure it works. We've got to get this around the right way. Positive, negative, where are we? There we are. Make sure it's turned on. And I've got to hear the clicking. We've got to get the clock to the right time. Can I hear it? 
see if you can see it moving. All right, we're about to drum roll to pick some winners for our, our essential stencil prizes today. I can hear it. I think, yep, I can hear it. So it is clicking and it is ticking. It's going around. How cute is that? So when I'm finished here, I may put on some more dots, but I think I'd have to concentrate a little bit better to get them all even around. But look out, if you're in the Stencil of the Month Club, I usually post pictures, or if you follow Essential Stencil here on their page, they always post um, finished pictures of our ambassador projects each week. So there's that. Let me just show you the other background. If you just joined us on the live here, we're going to be drawing some three winners in, no, three winners in just a minute. But I want to show you the other background that I created that's almost dry right now. So if you missed the beginning of the live, you might want to have a look at this clock background. It's actually a nice eggshell green. It does, it looks a bit gray on the video because of the lighting, etc. But we created these board look, like a shiplap look, VJ boards. And so I created those just by ruling a line through the wet paint. See the background was black like that other one. And then I created lines through that. So Essential Stencil is picking some winners and let me just check that they haven't come through on something else. Let me know if you see the winners there guys because there was Facebook was doing playing uh, funny games again and was not allowing them to post them as a pinned comment. So if you do see it come up in the comments we want to know. Um, otherwise they may send me a message with those winners on them. So look at that. There we go. We've got the numbers all in the right order guys and I did that upside down see that clock's moved hasn't it so it is going I can hear it ticking very faintly let me know when you see some winners yeah look at everybody <laughs> they're loving that clock so I love the word gather what would you put on the the background of your clock so there, we went through a few different ideas the bicycle I love someone was talking about buffalo check in our in our comments earlier I missed a lot of your comments, so don't worry. I will go back through and look at those in a little minute after the live, after we've picked our winners here. And um, I want to see some of your ideas for what you would put on the background here. I showed you the bicycle. There's the truck idea. You could do that. Yeah, the other circle board is cool too, and I can't wait to do up that as a clock also. The shiplap looks great. The roses. Christine would do the roses. That's a great idea. I do love the flower idea because it's circular and so it would be great as a flower. Um, some beautiful colourful ideas also. So, All right. <clears throat> Don't forget to use my code irestorestuff at Essential Stencil and you could um, you can get your 10% off that way. I've got my eyes on the thing. Here we go, here's our winners. Congratulations to these people. Don't forget to use my code for the Stencil of the Month Club too and get a free month. That's a very limited time offer. So here are our prize winners today. Congratulations to Patsy. Whoops, I've got a, I can only see so many names. Patsy, Rosa and Tiffany. Congratulations to you lovely people. Thank you so much for following and watching us today on the live. I'm Sharon from the blog I Restore Stuff. Remember that we do have the supply list for all the things that you need for this clock. Uh, a lot of them you can just get on Amazon, the clock mechanisms and that kind of thing, but the essential stencil links are there too for the numbers and the gather stencil. So don't forget to take advantage of that. And I will see you next week for another fun live. And I think next week I'm going to be showing you something fun and creative to do with the Stencil of the Month Club for July. Hmm, might have to wear my Christmassy things. All right, see you next week. Bye.